Welcome back to the Oracle of Enlightenment as we continue the Halloween tour and we're here at Fright World with Steve. Sortaika. Yeah, I was, didn't want to massacre that. And of course, uh, co-hosting our Autumn. Hello, how's it going? And the great Tessa Barrett. Hi everybody. <laughs> so Steve, tell us all about the new stuff you've got here at Fright World this year. Well, Fright World this year, uh, we completely revamped it. Oh, you so, sure did. <laughs> <laughs> our main focus was to tighten everything up. Uh, our major focus was consistency this year. Um, not saying that we weren't consistent in the past years, but we made everything mainstream across the board, down to management, down to operations, down to building, down to makeup and costumes, and then down to set designs. So this year, um, we had a crew designed and set to each individual operation, uh, which really brought consistency across the board. All the houses got tightened up and cleaned up very well. We squeezed the halls in a little bit to bring in that claustrophobia type feeling. Um, we had a full crew of set and details, and their main focus was just doing that for the whole setup. Uh, so the detail in the houses is the best that I've seen it in the past 10 years that I've been involved within the haunt industry. Um, the build crew went very smooth and uh, the, the floor plans uh, were the best I've ever seen this year and everything is completely designed and completely makes sense with the concept of each single house. So for instance in the asylum everything is designed based on an asylum and that whole theme is created throughout the whole house so that when you walk through those doors you're in an asylum the whole time. When you go through Grindhouse, you are in an insane person's house that is just <laughs> um, constantly, you know, killing people and hoarding their things and hoarding garbage. And then you go through Wicked Woods, which is, you know, a campground that's been taken over by zombies. And then you've got Death Trap, which is the concept of the underground world and being down below with all the coffins and the dead people. And then you go through Phobias. Caves. Yep, yeah. and then the caves within Death Trap. And then uh, you go through uh, phobias? phobias, which identifies the 10 most terrifying phobias of every individual out there. So do you make your blood or do you buy your blood? <laughs> um, everything actually at Fright World is built in-house. Uh, the skill within the company this year is the best I've ever seen it. We with the mainstreaming of operations and making sure that we have consistency across the board. The main thing was making sure that our build crew, our animations, our uh, makeup crew, everything is built in-house to the best of their ability. And when I say that uh, we probably have the best talent here in Buffalo, I'm speaking from experience. Oh yeah, you, you've done the rounds with the haunted houses, huh? Yeah, I uh, originally started uh, with Dark Raven Manor out yep. in Clarence on I Main Street. I used to love that one. <laughs> we had an awesome time. Um, that was a lot of fun. Yeah, Autumn would have loved the Saw House that you guys put together. It was like being in the Saw movie. <laughs> I'm a big fan of the Saw movies, and I loved Dark Raven Manor. Yeah. The, uh, the cool thing... Um, about that saw house was working with the producers and getting the approval um, and then in-house building all of the videos and all of the sets was an awesome experience because you really put yourself in the mindset that you're within that movie um, so that was probably the most fun i've ever had building a haunted house being a part of the video production and bringing the crew in to film um, because we essentially created those videos just like they put on the videos every time the saw guy captured somebody and played a video of how they need to get out of their um, you know, entrapment. So it, it was a cool concept to be a part of the video and then to watch the customers go through an experience as if they were actually part of saw. Yeah, exactly. I'm good right now. <laughs> <laughs> she already asked the question I was thinking of. Okay. Do you have anything else? Okay. Off Not off the top of my head? Okay. Um, so how, how have the crowds been this year? Awesome. Amazing. 
Um, the crowds, I've never seen so much positive feedback. And that takes us back to our original plans of bringing that consistency across the board. Um, with that consistency brought efficiency uh, with management, with your actors. Um, all the actors actually went through what we call a, a scream school this year, uh, where they were all trained by their management on different techniques, different prop utilizations, different scares, staying in character, putting yourself into a character. Um, so with that, our customer base has essentially given us awesome reviews. Oh, yeah. um, I've never seen, like I said, in the past 10 years of me doing this, everything that's been going on, the, the crowds down to the build, down to the management, everything is running so smooth and everything is just really, really the best. And with this being our 10th year anniversary, right. um, this is a huge milestone for us. And I think that this 10 years we have finally mastered uh, the production and the producing of a haunted house, a professional premier haunted house here in Buffalo. That's great. How long did it take you to build? Um, so generally, the way that it works is we work on this year round. Um, it's a 365 day a year job uh, for some of us and most of us essentially. And uh, there's a lot of uh, you know team members that it also is a hobby for them as well. Uh, and the nice part about that is that when a hobby is involved, people love doing it. So they spend all the time that they have putting it together. So. Working year round, we go to all the conventions, uh, you know, oh, yeah. and get different concepts and different ideas, and talk to different vendors and see what's new and new and cool, and uh, what society is going to start seeing at other haunts. Um, but the main thing is, is we kind of go out and see what's out there and what we can do a little bit differently to kind of make ourselves stand out, mm -hmm. which is the most important thing. Um, we're in Buffalo. There's other major haunts in Buffalo. We right. need to stand out. Oh, yeah. And um, so, you know. Building year round. Uh, essentially, we start building at our shop offsite, um, generally in the middle of July, and then we get into a building and we literally have three to four weeks of build. Now, is this going to be uh, your regular uh, location, or you think you might change locations next year again? Um, that all depends. Um, at this time, there's there's really no information regarding that. Okay. I know you built the new website, right? Yes. It's FrightWorld.com? FrightWorld.com or HauntedBuffalo.com. Uh, completely revamped, completely redesigned, all brand new content, <laughs> all brand new pictures and media and contact uh, information. Um, the company that we actually... The way that this worked was we started working on our website back in March. Uh, we were not too happy with our old website. And the website was one thing that just we never had time to do. Um, and back to our consistency project. We wanted consistency across the board and yeah. making sure that everything was top notch. Right. So our website was our number one thing because our website does the most numbers. Oh, yeah. It brings through a lot of people. A lot of traffic goes through that site. That site's got to be the best. Right. Uh, so we worked with this new company after several meetings of meeting with um, individuals uh, to see if they had the ability to build the site. We finally um, chose a company called Rogues Hollow and uh, their product is by far the best I've ever seen within the industry. Tessa, do you want to ask the question you asked me about earlier about the costume designing? Oh, God, so I can try to remember which one I was. <laughs> oh, yeah, about vampire. I'm trying to, I've been to a couple haunted houses now, and this is my next one. I'm hoping that some year one of you guys will do a room, a house that's just all vampires. Mm -hmm. Like because of all the vampire movies that are out and with the Twilight series and all the other movies and, and all the programs they got, I just think it would be kind of cool to see one house that's just all vampire stuff. Absolutely. It's um, when you sit in the back end and you, you come up with the ideas of what new movies are out there and uh, what can you do to maybe base a haunt off of it or take some ideas and concepts from that movie and put them into your house. The one major thing that you have to be really careful with is, first of all, copyright infringement um, and naming a house maybe after Twilight or something like that. But the other major thing is making sure that you're up to par with what society expects based on what that movie is that you're recreating for them. If you don't have the time to revamp, recreate, and redesign a whole house based on, for example, Twilight, um, 
but you do it anyways and the customers come through and it's not up to par, you get really, really negative feedback. Yeah. Um, the house might be amazing and be completely scary, but if they're expecting you know, the major characters of Twilight to come popping out at you and you don't have those costumes, you're doing something wrong. Yeah. So back to that consistency, making sure that we have the time to build and design that. Well, when you use characters like Freddy and Michael Myers and Jason in them, do you have to pay the, for the copyright of those? or? Uh, not necessarily. I mean, you can purchase a, you know, the mask at the store. So. Okay, so they won't get mad at you if you no. use this. <laughs> no. Okay. No. It's just designing something around like you did with Saw. Correct. Then you have to ask for a copyright. Right. When you actually name your house after, you know, a movie or something along that lines, you do need to get uh, permission to use the, utilize the name. Yeah. And Tessa's other question, she's a little nervous right now. <laughs> she's not used to being co-host, but um, her other question was, where do you get the ideas to design your costumes? So it's really cool because uh, on the off season, uh, me and uh, you know maybe four or five other people sit around a table and uh, we hang out, we grab some food, and literally for six to eight hours, we just sit there and we talk. What's the new movies? What's the new concepts? What's the new ideas? What was at Trans World, which is a, a major national haunt convention within the U.S., held in St. Louis in March every year? What was the major things that people were designing for this year? What do you think is going to be the major hit? And then one person will say, you know, we should do a house based on this concept, you know, and have this type of scare. And then the next person might say, that'd be a really good idea, but maybe what if we did it this way? And then the next person says, well, what about this concept to go along with that? So then once we create that list laundry list we then designed the house we designed the floor plans and then from there our makeup and our costume department will come in and look at the floor plans and understand the different scares they have understand the lighting and the music and from there they put a vision together of the different types of molds for masks that they need to put together in different costumes uh, so it's it's a long lengthy process uh, for the most part um, it takes days upon days of just sitting and talking about the, the house that you're going to create. And then from there, makeup and costume department will come in and then take your concepts and then build a costume based on that concept. Sometimes we will take a costume and base a house on that concept, uh, but not too often does that happen. <laughs> yeah, Adam and Tessa are both really good at designing costumes. Cool. In fact, their costumes not, are... Not so much me. Not so much me. <laughs> Not costumes. No. Tessa designs all, most of our costumes for like our TV show and things like that. Um, but, with um, uh, animatronics and effects, do you go with tried and true or do you take risks and try the new stuff that's out? Well, um, like I said, everything is built in-house. Uh, so there's a company um, that's called Dark Raven Designs that also works closely with us within the haunted house as well. So they're somewhat of a division of the haunted house. Uh, and they actually build all the animatronics that you see downstairs. This year, the newest product being our slithering snakes that literally have the movement of a real live snake, rattlesnake. That scared me like you would not believe it. That is one of the biggest scares they've gotten at any haunted house. It's between that and the dinosaur at, uh, at uh, um, House of Horrors. Okay. Yeah. Um, what scared him in House of Horrors was the dragon that came out of the wall at him. Gotcha. He almost jumped like 10 feet high. I did not. <laughs> okay, I did. He did. I don't get it too. It's, um, it, it's a cool part of the company there where, uh, you know, Jim, uh, Jim Hughes and Riley Cameron... Um, have this animatronic business and they are considered a vendor within St. Louis as well at that national convention. Um, they actually won this year best new product uh, at the haunt convention as well with over 400 vendors there so it's a huge milestone for that part of the company as well. Um, but like I said everything is built in-house um, and based on the other conventions uh, it's the most newest and innovative product out there. Um, so we are you know, headbutting the industry and kind of taking the lead with the new products out there. That's great. All right. Well, thank you very much for granting us this interview. Absolutely. Thanks so much for uh, coming in, and we hope everybody has a good time. 
So FrightWorld.com for prices, times, and location. Absolutely. We're open every single night until Halloween, Sunday through Thursday. We're open until 10 p.m. And on Fridays and Saturdays, we're open until 1 a.m. Okay. Thank you very much, Steve. Thank you.